Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Ahmed. Uh, I'm Cameron. We're from Toronto, and we're building Immune 2.0, an immunotherapy drug discovery platform. So as more companies and more researchers are focusing on ML drug discovery and design, we find it super surprising how the rising field of immunotherapy uh, is not being stressed upon in ML drug discovery and design. And that's why we find this opportunity. And uh, we are building software that uses machine learning to predict the effectiveness of immunotherapy and predict the immune response. The basic biology of this is that every disease or pathogen, like a viral infection, bacterial infection, or a, a tumor cell has an epitope. And this epitope um, is what our immune cells bind to, and our models can predict this binding. So essentially, we're looking at four therapeutic targets here, specifically viral infections, bacterial infections, cancer slash oncology, and autoimmune disease. And a point that I always like to bring up is um, CAR T cell therapy, which essentially targets only a handful of cancers and has extremely unaffordable cost of $400,000, is already on its way to a market value of $10 billion, which shows how much potential there is in something that can treat and create treatments much more efficiently for a wide variety of diseases. Now, uh, we're looking to license our software to researchers and pharmaceutical companies to start out with. And that will be um, a large part of the use case because it kind of um, it gets ahead of things like uh, clinical approval, but kind of the ultimate goal is to get it in the hands of clinicians who can use it there with patients and kind of bypass the cold supply chain that makes um, immunotherapy drugs so, so expensive. We're also working on uh, other developments in lab right now that we could also bring to aid this software development. Now, if you look at the roadmap, we're developing the testing software for viruses. Uh, we're almost done development. And then in August, we're actually in lab testing out and validating um, the software to make sure uh, it's working properly. Then we're doing the same for bacterial infections around the end of the year. And that's when we start to hope licensing out. We've already got testimonials of uh, scientists who say they'd use this to make sure their experiments uh, are much more efficient. And then we're hoping next year we'll start developing the autoimmune disease and cancer uh, platforms. And that's just because they're much more complex uh, to build up. There's so many more factors. And then kind of like um, the next thing is like to look into approval. And in the US as well, it's um, software as a medical device approval. So even though we are software, we'd be labeled a medical device. And that's the approval that we'd be going for. Now, what we're looking for here is mentors and investors kind of in the space. And also we're looking for ML developers to help expedite the, the development of the software. So yeah, that's yeah. the immune right now. It means every drug discovery. Awesome, thanks guys. Um, I noticed that you're a bit light on the technical details just in the presentation. Um, and just for those in the audience who don't have a background in biology, this problem of uh, immune kind of epitope prediction is actually one of the, it, it's an incredibly important problem. Um, it, it's really, really fascinating. It, it's one of the most important ML problems in biology that we actually has not been uh, solved previously. So just mm -hmm. we spent like three months last year kind of uh, trying to think about, you know, what would work well here. So it's amazing you guys are working on it. Um, one question I'd have to start is why start with uh, viruses as kind of a focus? Why not, um, you know, uh, CAR T relevant epitopes like everyone else is kind of uh, obsessed with in the field? Um, I guess to start out with um, when we did start the Pioneer project, our access to data was more limited. So development started right away with viral um, infection, right? Because that's the majority of the data that we had access to. And then kind of moving on. Uh, the simple structure uh, of viral epitopes make it, makes it easier to target. Uh, when we're looking at things like cancer cells and autoimmune disease, we actually have to consider these things called, um, well, they're still present in viruses, but less common, called conformational epitopes, which means that you also have to predict how the protein folds before you predict how it's going to bind. And that's also a huge problem in biology, the protein folding problem. So that's why viruses are a good stepping stone to kind of build the platform up. We were also, um, in the start, we were thinking, looking at um, uh, preparing the world for the next epidemic. And that's why uh, the first time we got into using, uh, like, uh, targeting for viral infections. And that's, that's what led when we got this bigger goal in mind to start with uh, viral infections. Okay. Uh, for those of uh, uh, the, the folks in the audience who are coming from an ML background, can you speak a bit to the uh, training data and other models that you're using to kind of make these predictions? Okay, yeah. So we're using uh, D uh, Deep Neural Network to do this. We did do uh, some tests with some other sequence predictions like uh, 
LSTM, which uh, essentially works on sequence prediction. And then in terms of data, we're just using data from uh, databases we have around 1.5 million right now, and we're trying to actively get more. In terms of uh, what we're training on is essentially the sequence, but you also have to stay cognizant that um, the sequence isn't what determines everything. So a lot of the data sets do have uh, different factors, things like binding affinity that will play into how the data is trained. And then also kind of um, bringing up another point, it's that ML doesn't always work on everything and we have to keep that in mind. So we are also using computational biophysics in some of the development. Got it. And then one last quick question. It seems like if you solve this problem, it's incredibly impactful, um, not just for the field of, you know, sort of infection, but also um, across oncology, a lot of different fields. How would you um, think about partnering in a way that would allow your platform to have the maximum spread um, while also keeping a few products uh, kind of internally um, if you do solve the problem? Yeah. So what we're actually thinking, although the platform does start out with us licensing out, um, me and Cameron do have the vision of uh, bringing the product in ourselves. If we're able to um, both design these drugs and deliver them, th that would be uh, the ultimate goal. And then also kind of speaking on some of the other developments that we're working on with other labs, uh, we're also looking at things uh, specifically with synthetic immunology. So how we can create genetic circuits that improve kind of immune cells. So that would be the next stepping stone after the Immune 2.0 platform is to design these things and have it be our own product within the company, not just something we license out in the future. Okay, awesome. Super exciting. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you. Thank you.